Hello friends, welcome back. I just got a question on one of my YouTube videos that I get various forms of this question. I've gotten it throughout the years. So it's a prison life video, which I'm so excited to be making. I haven't made one in a really, really long time, minus like my credibility podcast with Adam, where we talk about a lot of prison stuff, our story, inside stuff, some of his true crime stuff. If you guys haven't watched it, watched it or listened to it, it's a podcast. You usually listen, but it's a video podcast if you want to watch. And they're all linked here. They just kind of upload a little bit later than they do over on the credibility channel, but they're there are all the same videos. Anyway, not what this is about. So here's the question. This is a new prison husband. Well, it's a prison pen pal slash friends slash romantic feelings slash prison husband situation. But it's an MWI, meaning they met while the loved one was already incarcerated. And they're about to have their first visit. And it's a birthday visit. So I want to address a couple of things here. The question specifically was two parts. Number one, he said, it's his birthday. I want to bring a cake. He said, um, so I don't know where to order it from. I don't know if I should order a sheet cake. This way I can share with, we could share with the other inmates. I'm sure they would want cake too. Maybe the cops. I'm like paraphrasing and adding some stuff because again, this is questions that I've gotten throughout the years. I've made these mistakes. I had these thoughts. I had to ask, I had to learn the hard way. So I'm sharing this with you. And then also the second part of his question was the facility where he's going. And again, first visit is three and a half hours away. So he doesn't know if he should drive that day. He doesn't know if he should get a hotel room, if he's going to be tired after visit or whatnot. So let's talk through this. And then the third piece that I want to add though, he didn't say this and I don't know if this is the case or not, but I think we've talked about this prior and I helped him through it is that I think he wanted to surprise him at this visit for his birthday. So we're going to talk about surprise visits as well. So let's start with the surprise because that was already answered for him. And um, this is something I had to learn through Adam. Adam never liked surprise visits and a lot of people are like well I'll test him you know if he or her you know if they're using me having an affair having somebody else come to see them then I'm gonna show up to the facility with them not knowing it and see if anybody else is there see how they handle it I mean I guess that's the case but if you're in a relationship with somebody you feel like you need to test then I say number one go back and read and watch my red flags in a prison relationship and green flags in a prison relationship videos they're two separate videos but also like then you're probably not in the right relationship and I understand though I understand in a prison relationship it could get a little funny because you know there are so many confines they're so far away there's restrictions you're not with them all the time and especially if they're if it's somebody you met on the inside or somebody you had on and off relationship with and highs and lows and good and bad then it's possible that you don't necessarily trust them all the way plus let's be real nobody goes to prison for being a choir boy or a girl scout so they might have parts of their personality that you don't quite trust. So that said, I would work on building the trust through emails and phone calls and letters. And then also you can say, Hey, I want to see your visit list. I want to see your phone list. I want to see your email list, but surprise visits. I mean, maybe it's different for everybody, but Adam always asked me not to do surprise visits. Now there was a time or two where I would not tell him I was coming and I would drive up the night before because he was six hours away. And then I would be like, call me. And then I'd say, surprise, you have a visit tomorrow. And he handled that great. I think I only did it maybe twice. But the reason he explained to me that he didn't want me to surprise him during visits was because, think about it, this is their date. It's a date for them. They want to present themselves in the best way that they possibly can. So, you know, he wants to make sure he has a fresh haircut. He wants to have his khakis pressed. And you might be like, who cares? And some guys maybe are who cares. And some women are who cares. But a lot of people in prison, that's all they have and so they want to present themselves in the best way that they can because it's not like they wake up and they choose what they get to wear every day it's not like they get wake up and they have all these options to go get a haircut from this place or shoes from this place or you know i'm gonna eat this today they don't have options they don't have a lot of control and they're already feeling one step behind maybe emasculated for lack of a better word there's so much suppression so or oppression so they want to control what they can and they want to make sure that they're putting their best foot forward and they look their best and they feel their best and even they smell the best you know they want to make sure they get a shower before a visit maybe get some oils for cologne prior to you showing up and they can't necessarily do all that or they might like grow out their beard and 
their hair or their grays or whatnot. Or they want to chop, cut their nail, you know, all kinds of stuff. But then number two, they want to make sure, or Adam always told me he wanted to make sure he was accessible. So he could be out on the yard. He could be eating a meal. He could be in rec. He could be away from a place aside from his cell or on the unit where they could find him. And no cop is going out of his way to call him and be like, hey, Clausen, you have a visit. And if they can't find him, they're not gonna like go out of their way to ch check the yard and check his cell and all this stuff, check rec, they, they don't care. So he wanted to be in a position where I wasn't waiting for hours for him to show up for a visit because they couldn't find him because he didn't know I was coming. So there was a couple things. And there was a time where they did it on purpose. Like for some reason, the cop working visit didn't like him or me, or I don't remember what the situation was, but they told me they couldn't find him and he was in his cell, but they had me waiting there for two hours before they went and got him because they couldn't find him and he was there the whole time. Anyway, so surprise visits from my perspective, from Adam's perspective are a no-go, but that's something you're gonna have to talk to your loved one about. Now bringing food, cake, birthdays, I've gotten this so many times and it's just the sweetest thing ever. Like it's so thoughtful, it's so sweet, right? And I always feel terrible having to give this information, but that is definitely a no-go. Now this isn't 100% across the board. I would say it's 99%. There might be some places where they allowed food visits or they allowed you to bring, allow you to bring stuff in, but I know throughout the years that's been taken away at most places. You might be able to, in some places, do like a package where you get a catalog. It's probably online at this point and you can choose. And then they, and remember this is the United States and this is state that I'm talking about right now. And I don't have much experience with the state, but when Adam was in New Jersey state prison, since it's been gone, this was in the nineties, you hit like his girlfriend at the time could pack food the night before, could bring food into visit, right? You cannot do that anymore at most places. Now, maybe if you're in Canada overseas from the United States or in certain levels, certain states, you might want to call the facility and ask or and like California and places where you have family family visit that's different but I think you order the food you don't bring the food but you have to call the facility and ask federal system you will never want to ever 100% of the time you're not allowed to bring anything and then as far as okay so being able to celebrate the birthday with cake what I've done in the past is you're allowed to bring in money or a card, a preloaded car. You put money on this card once you get to the facility. Just depends on the place. I was bringing in money. I was only allowed to bring in singles, fives, and coins. And they check, you know, you have to bring it in a clear plastic bag. You can't have it in your pocket. So you bring it in and there's a vending machine. And then in the vending machine, you pick the closest thing to what you want to use as a birthday cake. There was like Reese's cake in ours. Sometimes you'd have to use a hamburger. One time we used, and I didn't, <laughs> Adam was so gracious. Hey. This is when I first, literally one of my first visits there, and I bought him like a ho-ho, you know, one of those ding-dong ho-ho things, and I you can't put a candle in it, but we sang happy birthday. So, like, you could do that, but that's the closest thing you're going to get in most places to being able to have a birthday cake or celebrate a birthday or a special occasion. Sharing with other inmates, I would not even call the facility and ask about that because that's going to cause a red flag. Here's the reason because they're worried about safety and security and they want to make sure that you're not sharing contraband. Even when I was at visit, Adam couldn't share his food with another inmate because you could be passing something. You could be passing contraband. I don't even think I was allowed to share my food with another visitor. We weren't even allowed to bring the food out of visit with us. If you didn't eat it while you were at visit, you had to throw it in the garbage so at some places which is weird because in the penitentiary, I could bring it with me, but at the low level, I couldn't. Now, I'm not sure if that's just because, because years have passed and the rules changed all throughout. It's different at different facilities. It's going to be different at different levels. It's going to be different every place you go. So that's number two. Did I answer all three? Oh, and staying overnight. So I would suggest for your first visit, if you can afford it, if you have the time off of work, especially for your first visit, I would suggest going the night before. This is what I did my first visit, driving to the facility, just like a test run. So you know where it is. Most of the time, these are in remote, desolate areas. So they're really hard to find. You couldn't find the facility on the GPS. So I had to get like as far as I could from my GPS and then find it myself. That might just be, that probably was the location where I was. 
But the point in telling you that is I would definitely, like I said, if you can afford it, I would go early. I would go the night before. I would do a test run while it's daylight, being able to find the place, knowing what to do. And then I would get to the facility early the next morning. Because if you think about it, three and a half hours is just a long drive. You know what I mean? Like when Adam was two and a half hours away, I would do that drive in the morning and drive back. When Adam, what most of the time, like if I wanted to do two visits in a row, then I would stay over because I didn't want to drive five hours between like driving home and then driving back the next morning. I think two and a half hours is doable. Three hours, three and a half hours, like you're starting to get long. So it's totally up to you. But even if you just do the first visit, you stay over. And then after that, you start doing the drive. It just depends on you. Like how long can you sit in the car? Do you have any issues with like your back or your legs? I started to have hip problems for driving that many hours and then sitting that many hours in visit and then sitting that many hours in the car on the way home it was a lot of sitting. And I was nursing like a CrossFit injury at the time. So I literally had hip problems after a visit. I would know for about a week I would be in really excruciating pain in my head so like that kind of stuff can you be in the car for that long do you want to be in the car for that long do you want to be sitting for that long or do you want to space it out and like what I would do is I would make an entire vacation out of my visits just to keep them positive so I would find stuff in the town to do I would go the day before I would get, get a manicure I would go to restaurants I would I met a really really good friend a, a woman who became a very good friend at visit so we would share the hotel rooms together and then we would like go hiking and do all kinds of stuff and make it our little getaway so this way it wasn't like a depressing situation even though visiting your loved one like the act of it while you're in it is amazing there's a lot of stress beforehand there's a lot of stress with the cops there's a lot of stress like in the back of your mind during the visit are they going to terminate me do i, I want to show where my hands are like am i doing everything right it's maybe that's just me because i'm an anxious person but i would say stay if you can at least the first time 100 percent the first time if you can afford it or save your money get a hotel room go early and then every time after that personally three and a half hours I would sometimes maybe not sometimes just depend but I would err on the side of staying and like enjoying it and not rushing or hurting okay I have a little man in the back seat who is getting a little bit um fussy are you fussy are you being a toddler he's just a very sweet toddler so we're gonna run into Walmart Adam is on his way back from Washington DC he was actually lobbying with fam to try to get compassionate release um, like updates and then retroactive. I'm not sure exactly, but it's like a part two of the video we posted when he spoke to the U.S. Sentencing Commission back in February. I did a vlog and then we did a podcast about it. And now this is like part two because they're going to lobby because it was voted, but it was like it passed just on like a four to three. So it's going to be tough to get it passed. So that's it. I'll keep you guys posted on that. I love you guys so much. Keep coming with the questions because I'll be happy to make these. I mean, not very edited, maybe in the car, maybe in the house, maybe a baby crying in the background, but at least I can get you guys the information that you want and need. And, um, you know, real raw talking to your friend versus like an overly edited YouTube video, which I also love those too. So whatever. I love you guys. Mwah.